Hi everyone, my name is Hasib. I'm an engineer here at Langfuse. And today I would like to share with you two exciting features that we have shipped to our playground, which are tool calling support and structured output support. First of all, what is tool calling or also known as function calling in the OpenAI context? It gives you a flexible way for models to interface with your code or external services. What you will provide is a definition of what kind of parameters your tool is accepting. And together with a name and a description, the model can then decide at any point to rather than return a response to the user, to rather call this tool instead and rely on the tool response then to provide a final answer to the user. And structured output is then uh, rather than having like a um, like a false schema when it comes to calling a tool, it's a false schema when returning a response to the user. That uh, schema like schematic response can then be used to either render specific UI and makes building LLM applications that have like UI building blocks, for example, a lot easier by having a structured output forced right in the response. Let me give you an example of a weather tool, right? Um, the models that we are calling, they don't have any real-time weather information, but we would love to provide um, a tool to the model that the tool can, the model can then decide to call, such that real-time weather information is then retrieved. Um, I will start with a system message and say, you are a weather expert, and the user message is going to be, what is the weather in Tokyo. Without providing any tools, um, I would expect that we would get some kind of refusal by the model. And the model says, I'm unable to provide real-time weather information as my data is only current up, to, current up until October 2023. So what we can provide now is a, a tool to the model where we are implementing on our application side some kind of real-time weather retrieval and then provide the tool result back to the model, and then the model knows, quote unquote, what real-time weather is at different locations. Um, I will, on the right of our playground, now add a tool, and we don't have any tools stored in our project yet, so I will create a new one, and I will give it the name of Get Weather. And both the name and the description are very important for the tool, uh, for the model then to decide when to call a tool. Right. So if the name and the description are not very helpful and descriptive, the model does not know when it is a good time to call exactly that model and also with what parameters. So we call it um, the tool get weather. The description is going to be um, fetches real time weather information for a given location. And the parameters are very important here because that is exactly the schema in which the model is going to return the arguments that then need to be passed into the tool to then actually fetch the weather information. Um, I will take an open AI example here for the get weather tool, right? And everything that is here inside the function is exactly our JSON schema um, that we need to paste then in our parameter section. I will prettify that. I think there is an issue somewhere. Are we missing a curly brace? Yes. So what we see here is now, I think uh, we need to delete all the name description parameters. So we only have the schema. So the what is like the schema in which we would like to have the tool arguments then return from the LLM. It needs to be a type object. It needs to have a property location of type string. And we also described for the model like how, what exactly this, this argument is. And we also mark the location property as required. With additional properties false, we also force that no additional properties are being returned by the model. I will save this tool now and submit my prompt again. So system prompt, you're a weather expert. What is the weather in Tokyo? Submitting. And what we see now, rather than a refusal, is that we are getting back a tool call. And we see that the get weather tool was called and the arguments were the location Tokyo in Japan. And we also get a tool call ID by which the model can then later relate back the actual tool call with the tool call result. I will add this now to the messages, right? 
in your application, the, the, this would be all invisible to the user. You would then get back the tool call with its arguments, and you would then do like a real-time fetch of the um, weather information for Tokyo. Here in the playground, you can now basically mock a response, right? So as a tool message, and you also notice here that we have the uh, tool call ID from the previous assistant message that did the tool call, um, set here such that the model can then relate back the actual tool call with the tool result. I will put here, let's hope it's uh, it's a nice day in Tokyo right now. Let's say it's like 25 degrees Celsius. And submitting that, we get back as a final response by the model that the current temperature in Tokyo, Japan is 25 degrees. This is now how tool calling is working. And um, what is an exciting feature also in our platform is that from your existing traces that have used tools, you can also jump into the playground and then experiment with that exact execution. In This is currently working for OpenAI traces um, coming from our OpenAI integrations in the Python SDK and the JavaScript SDK. So if I go to traces, I can see an OpenAI generation here that uh, has used tool calls and we see that it's also like asking for the weather in Boston and it's an entire execution with multiple messages including the tool response and the final um, message by the LLM that the current weather in Boston is 70 degree Fahrenheit. I will jump into the playground and we see that the messages are passed correctly, uh, the tools are passed correctly, the tool calls are passed correctly as well and we could now mock um, or like replay that the entire execution by just providing the messages and on the right the get current weather function that was used in that generation um, to get another final response by the LLM or maybe switch to a different provider for example Anthropic and replay everything so I'm using now a 3.7 sonnet and um, I'm getting in another tool call um, including an assistant message here, which is different than in OpenAI, where we only get the tool cost without an assistant message. And I can mock again 70 degree Fahrenheit. And we get a final response back. By that, we can quickly um, take a generation from um, our tracing view, jump into the playground, and then fiddle and experiment with um, different model parameters, um, different tool definitions, right? We could also um, update the description or update the prompt that we have used to get to a response. Let me reset the playground. And as the next thing, I would love to show you what structured output is, right? For structured output, I will give you an example of um, a math tutor that will solve an equation and return the response in a structured format such that like there are different steps by which like if the student then follows those steps they will also solve the equation. Um, this is the exact example from the OpenAI documentation here, right? So um, we have a system prompt where you are have for math tutor and you are returning responses step by step and the user is asking how can I solve 8 plus 8x plus 7 equals minus 23. Um, I will try again not forcing structured output. There we see that we get a text blob that is defining, like giving us the steps on how we can arrive to a final solution. However, assuming that I have some kind of application that is rendering the UI nicely of having the different steps, I would love to get some structured output here, right? So that I can. Um, basically have different elements per step, right? And have the user or maybe also just like reveal like one step at a time rather than giving them the, giving the user the full information right away. So what we need here is some kind of structured output definition. So I will now go into the structured output section and create a new schema. And that schema we will then call following the OpenAI example, we will call it uh, math reasoning and we will provide the properties as described here in JSON schema format, right? Jumping back, um, we call the tool math reasoning and we paste in the schema 
Um, for us, that is, that is here the description does not matter as much as for the tools. This is just for us like an internal load of what it is. Um, my UI and saving that and replaying the messages and the call to the LLM. We hopefully get back now a structured response by the LLM. And here we go. We are getting back an object with a property steps. And in those steps, we have an array of different um, objects again, where each object has an explanation and an output key. And by that, we can then take the response and run the UI a lot more nicely here. Similarly, as we have with um, tool calls, you can then also, when you have used our OpenAI integration in the JS SDK or the Python SDK, go straight from the trace. Um, we see here now, again, a trace where we have a similar execution. We would like to fiddle with that. Then I can jump into the playground and we see that the messages are passed. We see that the model definition is passed. And we see also that the structured output definition is passed. Here we see an unsafe flag because this is coming directly from a generation. Um, we can then decide to save that to a project as well. Let me do that here. And submitting should then uh, return us with a response yet again. Cool. This is it. Um, I'm super excited about this because tools and structured output are the backbone of all of the agents that are built out there. Um, jumping from traces into the playground will also give you like a quick way to experiment with um, different settings, like different models, um, also with like different prompts quickly. And I'm super excited to see what you are building now um, with these new capabilities in our playground. If you have any feedback or questions, feel free to reach out to us directly on GitHub. Um, I'm really excited to see what you're building out there. Thanks so much.